Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It is the Aqua Robot Man Nemo Submarine. Uh, if you missed the unboxing, kind of inspection setup and kind of going in depth, go ahead and check that out. I'll have the card pop up here and also have the playlist for this sub in the description down below as well as where you can get this from but today is all about the initial kind of water pool test i'm in the backyard here got the pool got the lights on just want to show you guys how the lights look on the sub and just what all the controls are it's been taking me a while because i've been waiting for this controller that works with it so i'll go over that in just a second but let's get started with the nemo First time in the water pool test, just to make sure it's all working before we take it in the ocean. Okay, so like I was saying, I've been waiting for this controller because the one that Aqua Robot Man, the company, sent me, um, it's this pretty awesome iPega controller. And you know, my iPad fits in here perfectly. You can fit a bunch of different devices, but this is the Android version. And unfortunately, all my Android devices wouldn't work with this and the sub for some reason. I'm not sure what the deal was, but one plus six. And I also tried my HTC M8 and neither of them worked. So I went ahead and just kind of waited and ordered this uh, PXN right here. This one works really good. I'll have this in the description. Works really good with the sub, but then this one also has a clamp here that doesn't fit the iPad. Anyway, I'm just using this little 3D printed extension. It's actually for the Evo drone, the Autel Evo, and I just kind of enlarged it so it actually fits my iPad. Get the iPad on, and then that just clamps right over the top. Now this isn't really super sturdy you can see how it's a little bit too heavy for this but i'd say as long as you're not moving around too much turning it like too far upside down and stuff it should be fine so i wouldn't definitely would not hold this over the water or anything in the setup i have here first thing we want to do is make sure that we can connect the controller to the ipad so we'll turn the controller on just holding into the power button until we see a couple of lights and we want to make sure that our bluetooth is on and we can connect to the speedy gaming controller is what it's called so that's all connected ready to go and we want to connect the cable here i've already kind of done this all in my unboxing guys so if you've seen this you can go ahead and skip forward just want to make sure that sucker is really tight on there let me go ahead and turn on the wi-fi in the reel here then all we're doing is taking the uh, battery and making sure we screw this in all the way we're going to kind of feel like a little notch and then you're gonna hear that chime coming up. And now we're just looking for the Wi-Fi, and there it is, it just popped up. It's called Aqua Robot Man. In this case, it's 08F400. So I'm gonna click on that. All right, got a little check mark, that's all connected. And that's really all you gotta do to get everything kind of set up. So now what we can do is go into the Aqua Robot Man application. By the way, I'll turn off this light once we, once we get it in the water, I just kind of have this pretty killer spotlight there. Looks like uh, they do have a new upgrade option. I didn't have that before, so we can check the firmware upgrade. Okay, so let's start testing, see if it can have a new firmware. I did just update this about a week ago. I was checking on it. Okay, it looks like current firmware is the latest version. Cool. And then I just had a, another chime there. Are you sure you want to exit? Yes. Okay, so that's actually new. I haven't seen that before. So that's new within the last month or so. So what we need to do is go to the base station and we want to make sure we have two check marks here for that and also it can detect if the battery is loaded. It's all working together and now all we do is press next. So this should take us into our display. So we'll get it in the water and we'll just let it sit there. It should float on top of the water. We'll go into our settings here. We'll go into setting there. And this is where we're going to do a surface trim. So we'll probably do this um, every time you dive just so it knows where the surface is to read the proper depth. So go ahead and do a surface trim. That fast, that easy. I already did a, a compass calibration, just kind of like a drone where you just spin it around. You see how the compass moves to where the iPad's facing? And then we can also go ahead and press that on top to arm the drone or the sub. And we want to start moving it around purely with uh, sub lights. Let me turn the lights all the way to 100%. And we're in D1. You see on the bottom left of the screen, it says D1. 
I want to make sure you guys can see this and it's not like too bright in the camera. Sometimes this hat cam really gets washed out. Okay, so let's go ahead and like just move around and D1 means it's the lowest mode and it can barely pull this tether out. This tether here is trying to unravel and it is. It's able to pull that out just barely. But we really want to see like what the speeds are in D1 and stuff. So I'm moving my controller to the left and right on the left stick. It seems to be working fairly well. I'm seeing an occasional freeze in the FPV on the screen, if you can kind of see that in my hat cam. You see how there's a little bit of like freeze lag in the FPV, so not really digging that. So let's go back here and let's try to submerge. So my right thumbstick, I'm going to go ahead and pull down. Cool, so that's how it is submerging. And then I'm just letting off, some bubbles are coming out of it. Okay, it's kind of going back up a little bit. And it should stabilize itself. So let's go a little closer to the bottom. And see if it can kind of hold the depth. You can see the video of nothing much to see, but that's just the bottom of the pool. So it looks like it's going to try to hold that depth within maybe a foot or so. There it goes. It's going up on its own and then I'm totally off the sticks. And you see how it's keeping it 0.2, 0.3 meters. So at that depth, it's just kind of floating up and down a little bit, kind of like what a, a drone would do with an altitude sensor. So at this depth, let me go ahead and go forward and see how this controller is moving it around. Wow, surprisingly stable actually. Although there is no current in this pool, so keep that in mind. So it came up to the surface. Let's submerge again. And we want to just really try to test like the full yaw speed and stuff. So that's full right in D1, which is the lowest stick mode. You can see it spinning there. That's in its lowest mode. We're also looking at the video just to see if there's any hiccups. It looks pretty stable. There's the occasional lag, but it looks overall stable. So left stick forward, that's our full speed forward. And we'll put in the turn and go forward at the same time. Starting to pull on that tether reel. So remember, this one only has two motors on the top. So it's not going to be able to kind of really stabilize itself forcefully left and right to keep its horizon level. It's kind of counting on its buoyancy, right? So this is going to give you a little bit of rock, especially in more current. So anyway, that's the way it's kind of running pretty good as long as there's no current in uh, D1 mode. I'm liking it and this is with lights all the way up full blast. Yeah, 100% there on the screen. We can turn them down. This is the lights kind of going all the way down. I'm just pressing the bottom right trigger. It'll stick in the pool there. So this is going to be way down. So you can turn them way down to like 10%. And let's see if we hold the button up. Nope, we can't hold the button. We got to just keep pressing it to get us back to 100%. And this is with camera settings all in auto. It seems to really be holding its depth good now. So that's good to know. As I move the sub, check it out on the compass, it's heading. So I'm turning it and that is north right there. So it is definitely accurate on its compass. I know north is in this direction at my house here. All right, so what we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna go into D2 mode, and if you see on the bottom of the screen here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger um, on the left top trigger bumper, and it just changed the D2. So this should give us uh, faster moving. It seems like it's about the same um, up and down, but where we should notice it is in our turning, yeah, so faster turning and then forward and backwards should be a little faster. Yep. So that's full speed forward and full speed reverse. Looks like those aluminum fins on the bottom actually keep it pretty darn level. So a good design for only having two vertical motors front and back to keep it 
going nice and smooth. You can see when I turn there, it kind of tilted a little bit. So if you're moving fast and turning, you see you're going to get that little bit of tilt. So keep that in mind. Let's go all the way out and pull a little bit more of this tether out. There we go. Okay, so that's in D2 mode. Just cruising around. So we can put in turning and forward motion, but it looks like once you get to a certain point, it doesn't want to turn very hard anymore until it stops. So there are some subs that actually do this better. Okay. And then remember, we don't have any um, pitch fo uh, forward, up or down, right? So we're at the uh, mercy of just the sub going forward. And then let's see if we actually move it uh, just up and down in the water while we go forward. So let's just go forward and then press up. Okay, so you can kind of get a pitched up shot, but you're going to have to be moving forward. Let's see if we do the same thing moving back. So we'll pull back and then push up. I'm pushing up now. Yeah, so you can kind of pitch it down just temporarily. Chasing Innovation's new one, their Gladius Mini can do that pitch hold. So this can't do any of that kind of stuff. Let's go ahead and go into D3. And that's the maximum speed. It seems to be wanting to float up. So I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom. Checking out the video. I do wish the video was a little smoother. There's a little bit of uh, freezing once in a while. Okay, so here we are in D3. We're holding our depth pretty good here, near the middle bottom of the pond. And let's go full stick backwards. Pretty fast, starting to turn a little. And let's try to do full stick forward. I don't want to hit the bottom of the pond, so I'm gonna go up a little bit. Right about there. And from one side of the pool to the other, we'll go ahead and we'll try full forward. Okay? So that is full forward in the fastest mode. And this is full turning in the fastest mode. Let's try full forward and full turning. And that's where this one gets a little weird. So you try to go full forward and turn. You can hit a certain extent until you, whoops, Kind of went down into the pool. You hit like a certain extent where you can, wow, in the fast mode, it's really hard to turn and go straight at the same time. So another little limitation maybe for this one is it's not so good at turning and going forward. You can, but it just gets a little bit discombobulated there. But the FPV does look nice and clear. You see the pool bottom there in the iPad? until it starts to freeze and kind of get notchy. Anyway, that's the nature of it and that's how it's working. But it looks pretty cool. I mean, I'm satisfied with this pool test. At least I know it's gonna work when I put it in the ocean and that's gonna be our next, our next video. No real control of your rolling and no control of your pitching where you want the camera. So that, those are the limitations I'm seeing right now with this one. Of course, this one does have filters you can snap on it, so you never know, it may do really well in the ocean. We're gonna have to try that out next. So not bad. Um, I was waiting for this controller and I'm glad it finally came in because it's really enjoyable um, controlling it from a controller instead of, you can also control it from the on-screen controls, right? See how I'm pushing the iPad on-screen control there for its depth up and down pushing right on the controller. And then you can also, if you didn't say you didn't have a, a physical hand controller like this one, you can also move it back left and right straight from the iPad here. Here I am touching the screen. And it's cool because you can do that simultaneously. Some of them shut off one or the other. Pretty impressed, just a couple of degrees of freedom limitations, uh, but it looks pretty good so far. Go ahead and pull it out of the pool here and we'll kind of talk about a little pros and cons. We do not want to get that wet. Remember to disarm, we're just pressing the compass on the top. And check it out, now it's actually sinking. So maybe initially when it has air in, it's going to be coming up to the surface, but when the air is all exited, watch, it may sink on you. 
Yeah, it's sinking for me in the fresh water. Probably in the salt water, since the salinity, and it's gonna be more buoyant in the salt water, it won't sink as much. So what can we say about the Nemo in this initial pool test? Be careful of Android, you might have some difficulty, is what I'm, I'm seeing for right now. To actually, the problems I had was seeing the Wi-Fi that this puts out and connecting it all together uh, with you know certain controllers pxn6603 it's a little gaming controller and this should work with a lot of different things so it's a good possibly universal buy um, and then keep in mind you can also control it just from your ipad screen if you really wanted to but you can see that there in the video here um, that's one of the negatives it's a little bit like posy in the fpv it is nice and clear but it looks like it's not super fluid that's one of the cons. The other con is going to be that pitch that we talked about. No really control of the pitch and roll. Just forward, back, turning left and right, and up and down is the limitations on this. One of the things I really love about this is look at this tether reel, man. It's a Wi-Fi hotspot for your device. There's a battery here you can recharge. And it's kind of like everything everything in this in one spot. And it's a great little plastic, uh, heavy duty reel, really liking this. This is kind of what other companies should kind of do with their reel, is just make it really compact and sturdy and have everything kind of all in one. This little guy s screws off and on so you can store it in its little bag a little easier. It does have this little spinner here, so it's easy to reel up, and look how easy that is just to put this, put this guy away after use. You know, and then you unplug it and you can just carry it by any four of these grab points. And the drone is also really easy to carry too by just holding these bottom fins here. You can see how these are the two kind of stabilizer bottom fins, aluminum fins. I'm a little worried about this in the ocean when I kind of go to the bottom. We're gonna see how these kind of deal with the sand and hooking up on things. By the way guys, I got a little boat so we can get out past the shoreline and start putting our subs pretty deep down in the calm water and get a lot more use out of these guys. It'll be interesting to see how they do off a boat. We'll be checking out some of the wrecks around Maui. There's a few wrecks here and we'll be exploring those and some of the reviews to come. I'll have again the links in the description for the Nemo so you can check out the pricing and more in-depth specs on it. And I'll see you guys in the ocean test of this guy and lots more subs in the future. Thanks for watching.